Hi, I'm Hun Jun Lee, and I'm from High Performance Computer System Lab, advised by Professor Zhang Woo Kim. So in this talk, I'm going to introduce our group's efforts and the uh, architectural insights regarding the next generation computer architecture for brain-inspired computing. So the first question that comes into our mind is, what is brain-inspired computing? So brain-inspired computing is a computing method that targets to exploit and analyze the characteristics of the brain. And these include analyzing the degeneration of the brain to find cures for brain disorders or uh, exploiting the computational capabilities of the brain ranging from simple recognition to the complex cognitive functions. Aside from that, modeling the low power operation of the brain is another interest of the brain as part computing. So deep learning is a simple example. It is a widely known example. It mostly targets the recognition part. On the other hand, researchers rely on brain simulations to tackle the other parts of the brain as part computing. However, despite the potential benefits, they are relatively unexplored. So what's the role of a computer architect? I do not major in biology or neuroscience, so what should I do? So let's review how deep learning evolves to become a major research field. And the slide shows the number of papers accepted to NIPS or NeuroLIPS from 1987 to 2021. And you can see that there is an exponential growth in the number of accepted papers since like 2009. And there can be multiple explanations for this. But what I like to emphasize as a computer architect is that GPU has been started to use for deep learning since then. And it just, implies that, it just implies that the proper hardware support, for example, in this case, GPU, has led to the surgical growth in the research interest in the research field. And similarly, as a computer architect, we should develop an optimal hardware platform that can simulate the brain. But the next question is, is like existing hardware platforms, such as using GPUs or like deep learning accelerators, sufficient to simulate the brain? And to answer that, let's review Neuroscience 101. So to study the brain, neuroscientists model the brain using spiking neural networks, or namely SNNs. And in this form, the brain is modeled with two major components, a neuron and a synapse. And these components keep time-varying states. A neuron keeps voltage as a state, and a synapse keeps weight. And these states evolve over time, and at some point of time, a neuron's membrane voltage may exceed a certain threshold, and then the neuron fires a spike. And this spike affects the changes in other states. For example, it first changes the weight of the synapses by triggering the learning. And as the spike arrives at the destination neuron, it affects how the voltage of the destination neuron changes. And at the other point of time, the destination neuron may also fire a spike. It triggers learning, and, and so on and on. And the main point is that the brain behaves in a completely different manner compared to, let's say, artificial neural network or the network models widely adopted in deep learning or machine learning. And it implies that the existing hardware platforms, such as using GPUs or like tensor processing units, may be potentially suboptimal when simulating the brain. Specifically, we identify four different challenges in designing an optimal brain simulation platform. So the first challenge is that there are various neural models to describe the behaviors of the neurons. Uh, so for example, some neural models change its membrane voltage more drastically than others, and some exhibit inhibitory behavior after it fires a spike. Or some, uh, some models are governed by the exponential function, or some in alpha function, or some in quadratic function. And the main point is that tons of variants exist depending on the neural model, and the simulator needs to support them for accurate brain simulations. The second challenge is that, similar to the neural models, various learning rules exist. So some learning rules are only temporary, representing the short-term memory of the synapses. Or some learning rules are permanent, depending on the spiking activity of the neurons. There are also some homeostatic changes that increase or decrease the weight even in the absence of the spikes. And the point is that tons of variants exist depending on the learning rule, and the simulator needs to support them. 
The third challenge is that the simulator suffers from the excessive compute intensity of the brain simulation. So as I said before, the state of the neurons evolve over time. To, to simulate such time-varying dynamics, existing simulator divide the time into a short discrete time quantum, which we call time step. And the simulator just sequentially iterates over the computation to proceed the simulation. But the problem is that the granularity of each time step is like really small. It is around like 0.1 millisecond to around 1 millisecond. So for example, if you're trying to simulate a single neuron for a single second, the simulator iterates over the computations for like 1,000 or even 10,000 times. And this definitely leads to high compute intensity. And lastly, uh, the existing simulator suffers from the scalability issue. In a multi-core simulation system, each core simulates a dedicated set of neurons of a target network. And the problem is that the balance, the loads between the cores differ depending on the spiking activity of the neurons. Therefore, if the cores proceed the time step independently, some cores may proceed faster than the other cores. And the problem is that if a core sends a spike to another core, this may lead to an incorrect spike arrival. So for example, in this case, the second core receives a spike at T4, but it should have received the spike at T2. And this timing gap incurs inaccuracies. Therefore, this is what the existing simulators do. So they basically synchronize the course before proceeding to the next time step. And therefore, all the cores simulate the same time interval. And therefore, as a result, it no longer suffers from the incorrect spike arrivals. However, the problem is that this global synchronization procedure blocks a core from proceeding to the next time step, even if it finished all the required computations for the given time step. And this, this increases idle cycles and limits the scalability of the simulation system. So this is our design. We designed FlexBrain, an optimal brain simulator based on the identified four challenges. And this is what we've been doing for like last four years. So we first start with the programmable data path, FlexZone and FlexLearn, which can be reconfigured depending on the target neural model and learning rule. And those papers were presented in ISCA and Micro. And then we, uh, we optimize a single core design by proposing neural engine. And neural engine is a spike-driven architecture that computes only when a neuron receives or fires a spike. Therefore, it reduces the number of computations. And this paper was pre presented in ASPLUS. And lastly, we propose NeuroSync by optimizing a multi-core system. So NeuroSync is a scalable architecture that can synchronize less frequently without sacrificing the accuracy. And this paper was presented on this year's HPCA. So, Let's dive into the details. So how do we design a programmable data path? To design FlexZone, we decompose a single model into a set of submodels. So for example, one of the submodels would describe how the neuron behaves after it receives a spike. And there can be multiple variants for this. For example, one of the variants would, one, a, a set of mo neural models would increase its membrane voltage more drastically with an infinite slope after it receives a spike. On the other hand, some models would increase its membrane voltage with an exponential function or with an alpha function. So we identify all these kind of variants, and then we design circuits. We design digital circuits for each variant. Then we combine this digital circuit into a single circuit in a way that can be reconfigured according to the target neural model. We identify another cell model. In this case, it is related to how the neuron behaves after it fires a spike. We design circuits, combine them. Find another cell model, design circuits, and combine them. And the same story. And we have, now we have the final design, FlexZone, a flexible digital neuron hardware, which can be reconfigured according to the target neural model. And this flexible digital neuron hardware can support 11 major neural models widely adopted in neuroscience or brain simulation. And 
to design flex learn, we follow the same design methodology, and the key difference is that we identify sub rules instead of sub models. And the resulting design flex learn is capable of simulating 17 major learning rules widely adopted in neuroscience. And let's move on to our next idea, neural engine. So how do we reduce the number of computations? Let's review the inefficiency of the existing simulator. The problem of the existing simulator is that the simulator evaluates the state changes for each time step regardless of the spiking activity. Therefore, it suffers from high compute intensity. Therefore, we propose neural engine a spike-driven simulator that computes only when a neuron receives or fires a spike. So let's move on to the example. So in this example, the simulator does not update the state until T1 when the neuron receives a spike. And after updating the state, the simulator predicts the next firing time of the neuron. And this process is important because, as I said, the simulator calculates the state changes when it receives or fires a spike. If the neuron receives a spike before T9, it updates the state and re-predicts the next firing time of the neuron. And in this case, it is T9, uh, T4, T4. So the simulator moves on to T4, evaluates the state, and sees that the neuron actually fires a spike. So the point is that by evaluating the state changes only when a neuron receives or fires a spike, the number of computations the simulator undergoes tremendous, uh, is tremendously reduced. And also, you can see that although the intermediate stage between the time steps differ, the spiking activity does not change. And just note that we also devised our own prediction model and a simplified data path and an event scheduler to handle the computations, but these are like technical details and harder issues, so I'll just skip them in this talk. And let's move on to our last idea, Neurosync. How does Neurosync synchronize infrequently without sacrificing the accuracy? So let's review the inefficiency of the existing simulator. So the inef this is the Gantt chart of the multi-core simulation system. And you can see that as the core synchronize at the end of each time step, the cores suffer from the idle cycle, simply waiting for the other cores to finish the computations and communications. And this inefficiency is repeated for each time step. Therefore, we propose Neurosync, a speculative simulator which makes each core speculatively advance the time steps without synchronization. And by removing the synchronization process, you can see that the idle cycles is greatly reduced. It no longer suffers from the idle cycles. But as I mentioned before, there is a misspeculated spike, the incorrect spike arrival. The core may receive a spike at an incorrect timing. And this incurs like simulation inaccuracies. Therefore, we propose to roll back and recover the misspeculated states, the states that are affected by the misspeculated spikes. And to enable this kind of rollback and recovery procedure, we need to synchronize periodically. So while the core synchronizes, the core saves the checkpoints of the state and uses the state to roll back and recover upon a misspeculated event. And you can see that by synchronizing only periodically, Neurosync achieves much higher scalability and performance by reducing the idle cycles. So this is the evaluation, and you achieve tremendous amount of improvements. So by adopting FlexZone and FlexLearn, uh, we achieve more than 30 times speed up and 262 times energy efficiency over the software-based solutions, which indicate CPU and GPU-based solutions. And also, by adopting Euro Engine, we further achieve 4.3 times speed up and 2.6 times energy efficiency over the baseline. And lastly, by proposing Euro Sync, we further achieve 3.37 times speed up and 3.81 times energy efficiency over the baseline at the 64 chip scale. And I'll summarize the talk. So, we identify four different critical challenges in designing an optimal brain simulation system, and these include neuron diversity, learning diversity, compute intensity of the brain simulation, and the low scalability. And we set four design goals accordingly. To design a programmable neuron data path, programmable learning data path, 
reduce the number of computations, and synchronize infrequently. And FlexBrain proposes four architectural solutions to tackle these four ideas, uh, tackle these four challenges. FlexOn, FlexLearn, EuroEngine, and EuroSync. And as a side note, uh, we are currently working on to design an architecture that does not simulate the brain, but that more like operates like the brain. And specifically, we're proposing a 3D NAND flash as an in-memory computing unit to process machine learning workloads. And this is one of our new research topics, and it will be presented at Micro 2022. So thank you for listening, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you.